This video is brought to you by the Center for Aerosol Impacts on Climate and the Environment, a National Science Foundation Center for Chemical Innovation. Hello, my name is Hansel and I'm here to tell you a little about a case and also about the Clear Case project. Hi, my name is Lorian and I'll be guiding you through the main components of our Clear Case instrument. And my name's Elias. I'll be guiding you through how to import your data into Excel. The Center for Aerosol Impacts on Climate and the Environment, or CASE, is a center which focuses on using scientific tools to understand the impact of aerosol particles on the world we live in. We are also committed to education and outreach events to promote science for future generations. The Collaborative Learning Through Environmental and Aerosol Research, or CLEAR, is designed to get young scientists like yourself involved in science. You will learn about small particles in our atmosphere called aerosols, which come from both natural sources and from human pollution. In addition, you and your team will join CASE in helping us better understand the world we live in. Welcome to the team. The main tool you will use to explore the environment is the CLEAR CASE. The clear case particle counter is an instrument that measures the number of particles in the air. It has two channels, one that counts the number of small particles smaller than one micrometer, and one that counts the number of big particles between one to 10 micrometers in diameter. What we have here is our clear case instrument. This interface is loaded with Raspberry Pi software. Here we have a toggle between AC power and battery power. To run an AC power, we must plug the instrument in here. Inside of our instrument, we have the brain, which has USB ports loaded on the side to allow for connection to a keyboard, a mouse, or a flash drive. Here we have our inlet valve, which pulls into the heart of our instrument, the optical particle counter. The pump, shown here, pulls air from the inlet valve through our particle counter and then out of the outlet valve. Here is our lithium-ion battery pack. In order to collect data, we'll go ahead and double-click the opc.sh icon. This opens the execute file window. We'll want to execute in terminal. Here we can control our collection by starting or stopping the count. What we see here is our data collection window. There are two channels one counting for small particles, the other for large. The top channel counts for those small particles smaller than one micron, whereas the bottom is our big particles between one and 10 microns. The y-axis here is absolute particle count, while our x-axis is our time in seconds. We want to let the instrument warm up for about five minutes. This will also be seen by our count starting to stabilize. Once the warm-up is complete, we can go ahead and open our LX terminal, and this records our flow rate every few seconds. We want to make sure to write down our initial and our final flow rates so that we can average them later. Then we can go ahead and stop our data so that we can see how to save our data. So you can save either to a USB flash drive, if you've already plugged one in, otherwise you can plug one in and save there, or use the desktop. And so when you name your files, you want to be very specific so that you know where it came from. Here, labeling them with the year, 2017, the month and date, as well as the time that the data was collected. Then select Save. We can go ahead and close out our windows. And then go to our Home button and select Shut Down to shut down the instrument. Hit Shut Down again. And then to ensure that it's powered off, we want to flip our toggle and unplug from the AC power. So after the warm-up is complete, you'll want to record your data in the clear case log sheet, starting with the instrument operator names, date, time, instrument date and time, location, extra observations, and data locations. Now let's see how to open data files using Microsoft Excel software. After you've plugged your USB drive into the computer, Open Microsoft Excel, a spreadsheet program that will provide a platform for analyzing and graphing your data. Select Blank Workbook. Once you've opened Excel, navigate to File, 
then click open finally select browse a dialog box will open ensure that all files is selected in the right hand corner of the dialog box normally this is set by default to all Excel files. Again, we'll want this on all files. Navigate to your data, in this case, the USB drive. Select the data you wish to open, and select Open. Select Yes. A text import wizard will open in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. As the clear case data is not an Excel file, we will need to use this import wizard to instruct Excel how to read your data. In step one of three, ensure delimited is selected. Then click next. In step two of three, unselect tab. Then select comma. And finally select space. Then click next. Finally, in step three of three, Ensure that General is selected, then click Finish. Your data is now imported into Excel. Select File, then Save As, and finally Browse. I'm going to save my data in the USB drive. Click Save after you've named your data file. You'll want to name your data file so that you will remember which experiment the data file corresponds to. I'm going to leave my data file named as is. Record the name and location of the data file on your log sheet. Then click Save. Click Yes. You now have your data successfully saved in Excel. You can now work up and graph your data. Please see the Learning with Clear Case manual for instructions on how to work up your data. Since this instrument contains a 5200 milliamp lithium battery pack, proceed with caution as there can be a risk of fire, which can result from improper charging, crash damage, or shorting the batteries. So the following precautions should be followed. Charge the instrument in an area free of combustible materials. Do not allow the battery to become damp or wet. Follow the battery charging instructions carefully. Do not adjust the electrical connections when the instrument is powered on. Disconnect the instrument from all power sources prior to adjusting connections. And avoid running on the battery when a low voltage alarm sounds. Now I'll show you how to charge the battery. When you plug it in, the charger wakes up. From here, insert the banana clips to the battery charger. And then connect the battery to the charger through the tracks connections. Connect the battery balance connection to the battery charger. From here, select the LiPo charge option by pressing start. And then retain default settings of 2.3 amps and 11.1 .1 volts with 3S. To start charging, you would hold down the start green button for 3 seconds. Charge the battery until a voltage of 11.1 .1 volts is reached. Then click the stop red button here. Never leave the battery to charge unattended. When you're done, disconnect the battery from the charger. First, disconnect the balance connection, and then the tracks connection, and then the banana clips. And finally, remove from the AC power supply.